Blah blah blah. Continuing from my previous thought, how capitalism relies just as much on human nature as communism, because essentially it'll it'll the money is supposed to come up to here, come up to the people who are the business owners, and these business owners are supposed to have to pay back their money and, and wages and and so on and so forth. But that that doesn't work because once the rich get rich, they're not going to let go of that money and they're going to do whatever they can to undercut and make sure that this money stays up here and that no money falls back down to the people and then the property grab just increases increases as the wealthy get more money and they get more power and they find more ways in order to ensure that this money doesn't fall back down here. Because in a truly capitalist society, what it would assume is that money would come to here and then the employers would try and pay their wages, decent wages, and people would take their money and they'd go out and buy whatever they want. Then it would go back up here after they purchased money, and you know, and, and then then they would go back down in some form of wages, and it would be this intricate, two flowing system. However, that doesn't work because essentially the money just comes up to here. It doesn't get put back down, and then people try and hold on to a little they have, they don't buy as much, and then the money doesn't go back up to here, that it just comes up. And, and people try and hold on to a little they have, and it just goes back up, because once the rich get into power, they're going to do whatever they can to make sure it doesn't fall back down again. Just as a coming system assumes that people will come together and work towards this sort of greater good and be able to to sort of come together for each other and govern themselves. So that's another similarity that I've, I've found between these two systems. But as I said, I don't believe any of these two extremes work because like, extremism in any form doesn't work. And uh, essentially, as, as far as my knowledge, there is no extreme capitalist government. I think the most extreme there was was um, when Augustus Pinochet came into Argentina and then he had these sort of very right-wing, very radical capitalist ideas implemented into him from um, various uh, American economi economists and it just kind of destroyed the country. And then I guess the one after that would be Japan, but that's no longer the case because the conservative Japanese government got kicked out in a landslide victory in uh, August, I believe it was, and it, uh, a more social democratic government has put, put into place, and I guess that leaves just America as, as the most extreme capitalist government, but that they are trying to change that, Obama is trying to change that with health reforms and trying to create a more a, a middle class again, but uh, he's having so much opposition from the House and from the Senate that it makes it extremely difficult for him to do what he wants. So, all these countries are changing except America, who was trying to change, but uh, not, not doing it so well. <sighs> so, what I personally believe is that there needs to be a balance in between these two, these two economic ideas. That there needs to be um, a strong private sector that can supply the people with what they need. And, a, and there, of course, can be the strong public sector to ensure that you know, the people who have a lot can um, have more freedom with their money and people can buy whatever they want, but I think all these human needs have to be met uh, by everyone before you can even begin to comprehend a more consumerist sort of role model. Which comes into one of my points of why capitalism, why a capitalist society can't work in a third world nation where most of these human needs and human resources aren't even 
uh, don't exist in African and other, you know, third world countries, a consumerist sort of society can't exist because people don't have food. And people who don't have food aren't going to be worrying about buying iPods and aren't going to be worrying about conf computers. They're going to be worried about survival. And that's one thing a communist government will always ensure is survival of its people, that its needs are always met. Which is why I believe that a communist government is necessary in various third world countries in order for them to modernize themselves and make sure all these human needs are met. And then they can introduce a consumerist sort of society. And then it can, uh, the two can eventually find an equal balance. But a communist society is needed to bring this place up until it can find this equal balance. Because, I mean, realistically, like, people say that, you know, communism restricts freedoms, which, th theoretically, this isn't supposed to be the case. Theoretically, this shouldn't be the case, and it's not supposed to restrict freedoms. In fact, a because I believe a conservative, conservative government restricts freedoms far more than an idealistic communist government should, because conservatives take a strong stake in personal issues, and they try and restrict as much... As, as, and keep tradition and restrict certain personal issues far more than what a communist government should. But anyway, what, one of the arguments people tend to bring up about communism is that it restricts freedoms. But, I mean, what's, what's the point of having freedom when you can't feed your family and you can't feed yourself? Like, what's the point of being able to have free speech when the only thing you really care about saying is, why don't I have any food to eat? I think people will be willing to give up some freedoms in order to be able to survive, in order to be able to live properly, and be able to <laughs> eat at night. Oh. Uh, okay, how much time do I have? Uh, about three minutes. I guess I'll talk briefly if I can about one thing. Someone asked me if I have a problem with Americans, and as when it comes to American people, I have absolutely no problem with the American people. I have a great disdain and a great disgust for the way the American government is run and how and its arrogant and ignorant foreign policy is something I have a great disdain and a great disgust for. But the American people, I have absolutely nothing against. I know most of my fans are Americans and I know many people who are American who I enjoy talking to and as far as the people and a population go, there are many fantastic Americans, but as far as the governmental system goes, I believe it's absolutely atrocious and disgusting. Like, just, it, it sometimes it, it makes me sick that, oh, that an American, that this American government can go and spread its disease to other countries and corrupt them under under its flag and under its banner. I, I, I just, I don't even think a government is really run by the president at this point anymore, that it's run by uh, the rich, it's run by a, a group of wealthy aristocrats who can input whatever they want and they can control Congress however they want with their money and their wealth and their power. And I strongly believe that that the president does have, doesn't have have that much power in society and that it's not really democratic anymore because the person you're electing into power doesn't have that much power anymore. That he can't do all the things that are necessary which is something you can see with Obama because he has all these great ideas, he wants to facilitate all this great change in a direction I believe the country needs to go and he can't do it because the demo because not the democracy, because the bureaucracy that exists in the American governmental systems, like he tried to do his, his health care reform and he had to cut it back so much and then uh, so it, it basically doesn't resemble what he wanted in the first place and then it just barely passed like it was, it, he passed by like five votes or something and his new act is, is like uh, people who can't afford health care the government will pay it for them so they can go buy private insurance health care which I believe is even worse than the situation before but that's a conversation for another time but
like I said, I don't have a problem with Americans as a people, and but I do have a huge issue with the way that government has been run in the past 10, 20 years. But I think I've said enough. Um, for now, this has like gone on for 30 minutes, but thank you guys for watching. This is Joseph Fisronovich Salen, signing off for now, and I'll see you guys later.